Welcome to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commando.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Gang's all here. Kim, Allie, Ben, I'm Mike. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Before we get started real quick, hit the subscribe button so you get this podcast delivered to your device every single week automatically. Later on, we're going to talk about driverless cars. Would you feel safe in a driverless car? Also, fake crypto apps. And we start with the news and America's digital goddess. Kim Commando. All right. So let me start by asking you all a question. If you post something on social media that's about a protest against the police or maybe something you don't like about the government, who do you think is actually looking at all those posts on social media? (laughs) FBI, post office. (laughs) Well, you know what you said? You said the post office. But, Uh you know, I would think like it would be the Department of Homeland Security, right? Yeah. The NSA, somebody like that. But you're right, Mike. It's the post office, the same people who sort and deliver the mail. That's, well, always late. They run the Internet Covert Operations Program. That's called ICOP for short. And what they're doing is they're tracking social media posts of Americans, and then they're sharing that information, they say, with other law enforcement agencies. So news is out that this ICOP program includes people who assume fake identities online. So the Postal Service has people who are assuming to be other people online. Then they're using other tools, facial recognition. Yahoo News just broke the story the other day. Now, among the tools that ICOP uses is Clearview AI. It's a facial recognition software program. It scrapes images off public websites. Three billion images. Wow, three billion. They also use Zignal Lab software, and they're running keyword searches on social media. They say to identify any potential threats schedule protests, and then they use another program called Enfusion to create and maintain anonymous, untraceable email and social media accounts. So the big question is, like, why? Why is the post office doing this? So the exact quote, and I'm going to read it, news report and social media listening activity helps protect the 644,000 men and women who work for the post office. Okay. I mean, so we definitely want to protect our postal workers. I mean, who wants to deliver mail in the middle of a protest? They can get nasty. Um, I remember, you probably see that picture of the, the mail truck that was on fire during the George Floyd protests in Minneapolis. I mean, we definitely don't want to fight to break out in a P.O. boxing match. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was just really surprised that the post office is in the surveillance business. And both Republicans and Democrats are now asking some serious questions in Washington. But did you know there's a site where you can see every photo of you? Allie, you were in my office the other day. Yes, indeed. And we looked at it together, and it's called PimEyes.com. Ben, you were there too, but we couldn't. Well, we'll talk about that in just a second. (laughs) There are more than a few sites out there. Basically, you upload a picture of yourself. They go out and they find the other pictures of you. And there are so many pictures of me online. It was Ooh, amazing. Yeah. You're a celebrity. That's, well, you thank know. you, Mike. There are way <laughs> less of me. Oh. Uh, well, there, there were so many photos. And, of course, yeah, I could look at it and say, yep, that's me. Then there was others that could have belonged in maybe an alternative paid Kim Commando <laughs> community paywall, I guess you'd say. There was porn, lots of it. Um, it was blurred out except for the face. But you could kind of see. Ben, that was why we turned the monitor away because – well, yeah, of course. I mean, I it mean. was like we didn't want you to see that. It wasn't me, though. But it was women who had, like, high cheekbones and maybe blonde hair. And they let you do a search for free, but then they want $30 or more uh, a month just to show you what's out there. And then they'll, they say they're going to help you get rid of these photos. Um, a Google image search is free, just saying. But, you know, if you don't want a nasty picture of yourself to appear anywhere, well, you just don't take one, right? And right. That's it. Makes sense to me. How easy is that? All right, guys. Uh, how about, uh, so we're going to Ben. Uh, Hyper Local Safety Apps Arsenal, or what's that all about? Well, okay. So who here is familiar with the app called Citizen? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay. So, well, for those of you who haven't heard of it, it's because it's really only in like 20 cities across the country. Uh, it's an app that sends real-time hyperlocal alerts uh, on stuff happening near you, house fires, car crashes crime alerts are the big thing. So think of it as an app that's like a a police scanner. But the problem is a lot of the reports it sends are unverified. 
couple of years ago, there was a report of a tiger loose in a New York neighborhood. Turned out to be a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, was, it was an animal. Right. It was close. Yeah, now it's 2021. We have real-life tigers roaming neighborhoods. In Houston, but, yeah. of all so, places. <laughs> well, that's important because about a week ago, there was a pretty big wildfire in an L.A. neighborhood. Citizen, I guess the moderators at, at Citizen, put out an alert. Here's a picture of the suspect in this arson with a $30,000 reward for info leading to his arrest. Wow, okay. Well, money motivates, you know. Lots of tips came in. Police ended up detaining someone. Problem is, wrong guy. Oh. So they let him go. They actually found the suspect who they believe actually started the fire. But as far as where Citizen got the info they put out... The post office. <laughs> the post office. <laughs> it, the, it didn't come from official sources. But they posted a picture of this person, a homeless man, who apparently had nothing to do with it, and it was up on the app for you know 15 hours. Uh, they later released a statement, Citizen, we regret posting the photo without having coordinated with no, the appropriate yeah, yeah. agencies, blah, 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 actively working to improve our internal processes. You know, they had this statement with the New York Times, and they say, we absolutely do not believe in putting law enforcement in the hands of the public. Well, that's what the app does. Yeah, fun fact, when this app first launched a few years ago, it was called Vigilante. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I think, now, you are a former law enforcement. Yes, reserve. Uh -huh. Now, how would you feel if you could use that maybe to your benefit? So you could get in there and maybe possibly find the right person. It's great if it's used properly. That's the problem. If, if you're releasing all of these alerts, you know, okay, avoid the area because a house fire crash, that's one thing. But if you're putting out, you know, alerts, hey, there may be this yeah. break-in at this house, and now you've got people who, you know, converging, who, oh, I live on that street, so we're all going to gather on the corner. That doesn't help anything. Well, you just can't believe everything that you read on the Internet. Or, yeah, or that... Wait, we are, really? <laughs> we are just passing along so much advice here <laughs> yeah, today. Really. Don't post naked pictures online. Exactly. Don't believe what you're Although, yeah, that was funny because Allie and I were talking about content to put on the site. Ben, you were there too. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we don't, we, one of the topics that we've never covered is how do you share safely naked pictures of yourself? I mean, what is the best way to do that? Now, of course, not that I'm going to do that. I mean, Barry and I have been married forever, but... You know, and Allie's like, hmm, probably not a good topic for us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should try it and see what happens. <laughs> well, sure. let's put it this way. If you'd like to have us write how you can share naked <laughs> pictures online, send us an email to podcasts at commando.com. Oh, no, that should be on the radio. That, that's a question on the radio show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, Allie, we've Mike got... Mike calls. Yeah, Mike, you're going to call in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything worth knowing about this latest Google conference. Yes, What's going on there? Google just had their big annual conference. These things always start out with a lot of bragging. There are 3 billion active Android devices. For comparison, do we know how many active iPhones there are? Not as many? Mm, Not nearly as many. I think 2 million? I mean, 2 billion? No? Well, I know, so I'm not going to... 1 get. billion. <gasps> One third. Really? Yes, a lot more Android. Oh, that out makes there. sense because you have so many more people that make Android devices. Absolutely, yes. Some of the highlights from this: there's a new feature in Google Photos that lets you hide pictures in a locked folder behind a password. You've Naked always had to pics. do. There, <laughs> there you go. we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, with Android. And then share. <laughs> yes, and then share the folder. <laughs> Just give them the password. <laughs> Thank <Fine>. you, Google. <laughs> Android 12 will let you unlock your car with uh, select Pixel and Samsung Galaxy phones. This is already in the works for iPhone, has been for a while. The car manufacturers, though, they're behind. Um, not really working yet. It will work only with BMW. So if you've got a Pixel and a BMW, you're in luck. There are some new Google Maps features coming, eco-friendly route. I think this one's cool. It'll show you routes with less traffic, fewer stop signs, and more downhill coasting. Ooh. Yeah, safe route mode identifies where there's lots of sudden braking and things like bad weather, heavy traffic. Both of these actually sound really helpful. In Chrome, a new quick delete feature that's going to let you delete your last 15 minutes of searching. Nothing mm. fishy there. Naked pictures there again. There you go. <laughs> In Chrome again, if Google spots a vulnerable password, Google Assistant will change it for you. You just have to hit a button, change password, and it will give you a new secure password that is then stored to your keychain. Which you'll never remember. Of course not. But or if it's in your Chrome that's sync, that's true. Okay. Then you don't need to worry about that. And then this one, Dr. Google is getting even better. Take three pictures of a problem area on your skin. Let's say you've got a rash on your arm. 
and it will run it against a list of 288 different skin conditions that are all verified and programmed in there. You answer a couple questions, and it will help give you an idea of what might be going on. Okay, that got my attention today. Yeah. Okay, and I, you know why I read about that? Hmm. Well, you know, because I'm my mother's caregiver. So I went over to her house yesterday, and she says to me, here, look at my butt. <laughs> I'm like, what? She's like, and she pulls her little shorts down. But she goes, here, there's something on my butt. What's that? <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh. More naked pictures. We, yeah, yeah. I said, you know, too bad we don't. And that's why I looked at this morning. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have something I can have her do for herself. Yeah. She can do it. Now, did you hear that Google also has a new platform for tracking your bowel movements? Oh, no. <laughs> What's it called? Google Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Not new, but there you go. All right. So, um, bit, well, we've got a new feature we got to talk about real quickly. We got a new feature coming up that uh, Ben is going to do a product review. Now, you chose to do a charger for the first one. Earbuds. Earbuds. Oh, you changed it. I did. Actually, that is much more exciting than a charger. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, So we're going to review some. uh, Kim, you're going to be back for that. And uh, we're going to review some earbuds on that. Also, how to easily take and crop a screenshot on your PC or Mac. And brand new is just ahead with Tech Refresh from Kim Commando and Friends and Commando.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and Friends from Commando.com. Brand new, not true, is just ahead. And Ben, how to easily take and crop a screenshot on a PC or a Mac. Yeah, so taking a screenshot... Of your computer screen is pretty basic stuff. You know, for instance, on Windows, just tap the Windows key plus the print screen key, and boom, screenshot saved into a screenshot folder in the main photos folder. A full screenshot is grabbing whatever's on your monitor or multiple monitors, which could include sensitive information. Well, it's just as easy to just get a screenshot of what you want. For Windows, just hit the Windows key, the Shift key, and S at the same time to snip the part of the screen you're looking for. Just hold the left mouse key to drag the size of the box to snip, let go, and it saves the same way. It's just as easy on a Mac. Press Command, Shift, and the number 3 to screenshot your whole screen. Or press Command, Shift, and the number 4 to bring up crosshairs that you drag across just the part of what's on the screen you want to save, and it'll save to your desktop as a PNG file. Easy as that. You can find tips like that at commando.com. Got it. Okay, it's time now for Brand New or Not True, America's national game show sensation, where you can play and guess, is it brand new or not true? Every week, there's literally thousands of new products in the technology world, some hard to believe, some not. When playing Brand New or Not True, we'll present you, the home listener, with three products, sites, or ideas, and it's up to you to decide which two of the three are fake and one is real. Uh, All right, let's start with product number one. All right, think back to the last time you went to the beach. You were carrying heavy bags full of all your stuff, chairs, an umbrella maybe, and dragging along an ice chest. If you don't have a bunch of people with you, that is such a pain. That's where the beach buddy comes in. It's an ice chest that follows you. The cooler isn't really that smart. It's just a plain old cooler. There is a spot on top that you can mount an umbrella, but you shouldn't trust that in high winds. The cool part though is the built-in Bluetooth that allows this motorized cooler to follow you from the car all the way to your spot in the sand. You pair the beach buddy and it goes where you do. Make sure you tell it to stay put in the app or turn off your Bluetooth when you got to the water or it'll probably follow you there too. The beach buddy is $299. Okay, that's product number one for $299. Product number two. Spending some time in the sauna sounds pretty nice right about now. It's not just relaxing, but studies show it's good for you too. Infrared saunas warm up your body's core temperature, not the surface of your skin, and they lower blood pressure, it can improve circulation, decrease pain, even help you lose weight. Instead of going somewhere for that, you can do it in your own home with the Sunlightened Solo. It uses ultra-low EMF technology. It's a one-person bamboo sauna that looks, well, honestly, a little bit like a casket or maybe a CAT scan machine sitting on top of a massage table. Don't worry, your head is sticking out the whole time. It's lined with three inches of memory foam, so it's comfy too. You just spend 30 to 45 minutes inside and you'll come out feeling like a brand new person. It is $2,000. Okay, got it. Product number three. One of the best parts of going camping is the fire. Roasting marshmallows, cooking hot dogs, helps you stay warm at night and of course it lights up the campsite but with all the fire bans across the country there's a good chance you can't light a fire next time you go out into the wilderness 
you can bring glow with you instead. Glow gives you the light and heat of a fire without the actual fire. Glow uses LED lights, fans that creates flames, and a built-in heating system to make camping cozy. It uses 80 different LED lights to create flames up to 14 inches tall. The LEDs are rated for over 50,000 hours of use, so they won't need to be replaced probably ever. The heating system goes up to 85 degrees, so it's hot enough to warm you up, but not so hot that it damages the rest of the fake fire. Now, you can't actually take this thing totally off the grid. It runs on a 110 volt connection and comes with a 10 foot power cord, so you do have to plug it in. Glow is $199. Okay, the three products are the Glow for $199. It's a kind of a fake campfire, the sauna, sunlight solo, which is looks it seems like a, a sauna that you put on a table and you jump in it. And then also the Beach Buddy motor cooler that follows you around with Bluetooth. All exceptional ideas. As usual. Thank you. Um okay. Two are fake and one is real. All right, so what is most likely to be real? Okay, I'm going to say most likely to be not real is the Sauna Infrared 2020 Sunlighted Solo. Uh, just doesn't make sense. $2,000, pretty expensive. Uh, second most likely to be not real, I'm going to say it's the glow light. I mean, really, come on, you plug it in? You want to go camping and plug in a fire? Uh <laughs> I almost want to say that's the real product because it's so unlikely and you guys do that. But I'm going to go, I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to say that's not real. I'm going to say the beach, wow, the beach buddy motor cooler is kind of hard to believe too. Now I'll go with the beach buddy motor cooler for $299 is the real product. Go ahead, Ben. Not buying that. Beach Buddy. That's okay. something I should know about. You would love to buy that. Well, yeah, if it was real. But that's something I would think I would know, but I'm not saying I do. Yeah. But, I mean, that's cheaper than a Yeti that's dumb. Mm-hmm. A Yeti that doesn't follow you around. Okay. So, and I just imagine it getting stuck. So I'm going to say that one's fake. I kind of went back and forth on the next two. I was like, yeah, definitely the sauna. Because, again, that fire at the end, hmm, I figure I would know about it, but if it is something I have to plug in, then I probably would have just, like, immediately disregarded it. Mm-hmm. So, you know what? I'm going to stick with my original plan. I'm going to say the Beach Buddy and the Glow are fake, and I'm going to go with the sauna being the real thing. Okay. All right. No one thought... Mike, what, which one did you think was real? I had the Beach Buddy. I think the Beach Buddy was real. All right. No one thought the Glow was real, and that's right? because it's fake. Okay, good. That's a little silly. One of us got it right then, maybe. One of you did get it right. Process of elimination. Okay. The real product is... The Sunlight and Solo. Oh, the sauna. Ben, well done, good ben. job. Ben actually fooled us both last week when he had the products. He's on a heater. And uh, gets the right one this week. So, yeah, on a roll, Ben. Congratulations. Thank you. More about that sauna. What's what what's unique about it? Yeah, it's it's really just a little at home sauna. So instead of actually going out and sitting in a sauna, you can set this up in your house. Or in Arizona, we just go outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's you know, skin cancer and all that stuff. Yeah. This is yeah, special infrared light. You set it up in your house. It's like a little um Almost like a little sleeping bag, cocoon kind of thing. I on just top couldn't of get table. over the two thousand dollars to buy it, though. Why? Ridiculous, why is so expensive? Yeah. And up next, we're going to take a look at uh, driverless cars. Would you feel safe in a driverless car? Also, the scam of the week: fake crypto apps, and it's tech refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commando.com. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commander.com. Every week we give you the inside scoop on what's going on in tech, so you're the source of tech information for your friends and family. This week we're going to take a look at, uh, well, driverless cars. Would you feel safe, Ben? Yeah, and when I say driverless, I do mean that. I'm not talking about Teslas or you know other cars you can buy with have, which have driver assist technology necessarily. Because, you know, when quote-unquote self-driving cars started showing up over the past few years, I got excited about the idea. You know, you get lost in your imagination. You know, I I get a head start on some work while the car drives me to the office, or I can actually stop and look around during a road trip, you know, or, you know, take a nap if I could do that in a car anyway. It's pretty clear now that there's still a long way to go. People think their Teslas drive for them. I mean, they call it autopilot, so that doesn't help. You have all these crashes. A few days ago in Washington State, a Tesla on autopilot crashed into a police SUV that was parked on the side of the road at an accident scene. 
never even slowed down. And you have this guy in California who rides in the back seat of his Tesla, gets stopped, gets his car impounded, and says, well, it's my right. I'm going to keep buying Teslas. Right. I saw that. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's just, I, I don't even get that. But in the Phoenix area, a company called Waymo has a limited number of driverless taxis that actually pick up passengers. Well, the other day, one got totally confused by traffic cones blocking a single lane, and it just stopped and blocked traffic. It even dr- tried to drive away from the rescue crew that that arrived. So what's your take? Not so much on getting a Tesla or a car that can kind of drive for you, but if you could take a ride in a fully autonomous taxi or other kind of vehicle right now, you know, just hop on in. Nobody's in, nobody's in it but you. Would you do it? Go ahead, Allie. Okay. Yes, but... My answer is yes, but so I wouldn't get on the 10. I wouldn't get on the highway on one. I wouldn't go in a busy on, you know, in a busy neighborhood, a busy area. But they do have those areas where they're really kind of testing areas where there aren't a lot of people. It's really for the cars to get acclimated, know what they're doing. So maybe in there. Yeah, I think I would do that. Uh, for me, I, my my original answer was yes, absolutely. I'm jumping in, all in, no problem. And then I kind of thought about it, <laughs> and I was like, well, let's see, maybe like you in a controlled environment, right? Uh, yeah. And then, but in traffic, my next, my last answer after I looked up where they are with the National Trans, the Highway Safety Administration or whatever that is. Is they're not ready yet. They they don't think that they're safe, and so I think that's you're putting your life in danger if you're going to try to do that. So on again, an uncontrolled environment. So I would say absolutely not. That's kind of mine too. I mean, I, I'm just not. I don't think I'd feel comfortable now if they said, "Well, would you do it for ten thousand dollars?" Well, hang on a second. <laughs> oh sure. You know, around the block. How, how you know? long are we talking? <laughs> Five minutes? Driving? Ten minutes? <laughs> okay. How much money do you have? <laughs> Kim actually did a, a really great podcast all about this. Um, she talked to somebody from Consumer Reports, who's their head of automated driving, basically, about, okay, is this stuff safe right now? Is it going to be safe in the future? They do get into stuff like Tesla's autopilot, but also these completely driverless cars. So it's it's a really good um, podcast, definitely worth listening to. It's the Tech Refresh podcast with Kim Commando and friends. One of the things we promise every week is to keep you from getting scammed. So each week we talk about a new scam that you need to watch out for. And this week it's about uh, fake crypto apps. Yes, indeed. You can't do anything, go on the Internet, talk to anybody without hearing about crypto in some way. In fact, we just recorded Kim Commando Explains um, episode where we talk all about cryptocurrency, how to use it, what it is, where it comes from. And, of course, we talk about scams. Um, That'll be coming out soon. So definitely give that a listen. But for now... Sophos, they are a security firm. They just released research on 150 different apps uh, across both iOS and Android that are pretending to be cryptocurrency apps, but really they're just a way for people to steal your information. The way they work, you get sent to basically a fake app store. You click a link, you end up in a fake app store, download an app. You think you're putting in your information to connect your bank to it, but really you're just giving away your banking details to someone who is very happy to have them. When you come back and try to take that away or take money out, nope, they've blocked access to the account. Okay, how do you stay safe from these? First of all, do your research. Don't just download an app based on an ad you click, something in your email. You need to go to the official app store yourself. So open up your phone, go to either the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. That's the only place you should download apps. Um, Read the reviews, even if an app is legit. Sometimes you'll find reviews of people saying, hey, there's something a little fishy with this, um, before it will actually end up as, you know, a real alert or it gets pulled down from the App Store. And, of course, um, don't trust anyone who comes to you and says, download this app and we'll get you lots more money. It's almost undoubtedly a scam. Uh, There's a lot of them out there. Okay, so uh, coming up, our new feature this week, Ben is going to do a product review, and this week it's about headphones. And also, Allie, you've got some high schoolers that started a free tutoring service. It's all next on Tech Refresh from Commander.com. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tech Refresh podcast heard exclusively on the Kim Commando Explains podcast from Commander.com. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button so you get this podcast delivered automatically every Friday with the uh, Kim Commando Explains podcast. That also gets you the special feature podcast this week about Amazon. Amazon, the big behemoth, is, uh, is everywhere. They sell everything. They host all kinds of websites. 
and they make a bazillion dollars, as uh, Jeff Bezos can attest, worth almost $200 billion now already. Well, Kim is joined by guest Jason Boyce. He's the author of the book, The Amazon Jungle, and it's about the truth about Amazon and how big they've become. And we even actually take a look of about uh, whether they're a monopoly or not. So that's on the Kim Commando Explains podcast. Right now, though, we have a new feature. Kim is back with us. This is Ben's review of some headphones. Yeah, so in addition to this podcast, I also review products for our website, commando.com, and weekly on Kim's national radio show. One of the products I recently reviewed are called the Soundcore Liberty Air 2 Pro earbuds. So that's kind of a mouthful. I mean, like, who thought of that? Uh, Can you say that one more time? Soundcore Liberty Air 2 Pro earbuds. I guess the Pro makes me think it might be okay. Mm. Yeah, Yeah, it's a mouthful. But, you know, Soundcore designed these to take on Apple AirPods Pro, with the key feature being active noise cancellation. So I have a set of those already, and I was a little skeptical. Of course you do. Yes. Well, a couple of headliner features I won't spend too much time on. A lot of different ear tips come with it, so you can find the exact right seal for your ears. Okay, that's important. Otherwise, yes. noise cancellation doesn't work. Yeah, that's a really important feature, and a lot of people don't think about that. And when you buy the cheapo earbuds, mm-hmm. you know, whether you've got big ears, because you know, as you get older, your ears get bigger. I mean, I, thought, I think that's a, a really funny evolution thing, that as you get older... Your ears get like more like Dumbo, <laughs> so you can hear. Better. So you can hear yeah, better. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ben. Oh, that's I okay. Tangent, I didn't even back. know how to follow. I was thinking about tip ideas for <laughs> got larger ears. Here's the earbuds for you. <laughs> so that's one of the things. And there are different modes for the noise cancellation on this. So an indoor mode blocks out the ambient noise around you, people talking. Then there's more of a transparent noise cancellation when you're outside. So you're on a walk, you're on a bike ride. You don't want to, you know, miss that car coming up exactly. behind you. That's important. So. There's also another mode I, I won't get into right now, but other things. Good battery, fast charging. The biggest test for me is I wanted to use these more than just music and podcasts. I wanted them to be able to work on m- my PC for work calls, for the video calls we've been doing over the past year. Because I've tried the AirPods. I've tried other brands, older sound cores, other brands that you, you hook them up, and the audio, because of the different profiles and things like that, Everything sounds horrible. Or let me tell you, I was on a Zoom call today on our affiliate station in Dallas, KRLD. I hooked up my AirPod Pros to my iMac. I tested them on YouTube just to make sure that it would work. I fire up the Zoom call. The guys and gals from KRLD like pop up and they're like, they're talking. I can't hear them. I'm like, oh, (laughs) you know, so yeah, very annoying. Yeah, well, that's. You know, Apple to Apple. Yes, literally. exactly. This, you know, Apple to Windows definitely doesn't work. So I've always had either plug-in or a over the full-on over-the-ear set of Bose headphones that have worked. These, though, these Liberty 2 Airs, I hooked up, and you know what? It sounded pretty good. First call I had was with Allie when I got them. I could hear her. I didn't sound like I was talking into a tin can. Was he pretty excited about it, Al? I bet you he was. Oh, I was. That is what sold it for me because you can go on Amazon, and there are hundreds of options, names you've heard of, names you haven't for earbuds. These actually solved two different problems for me. Now, because the Pro in the name, 130 bucks. Oh, that's that's not bad. Well, I mean, when you consider the retail price of AirPods Pro, 250 or maybe 500 because when your teenage son comes home and takes yours back with him to college, which <laughs> happens to me, uh, I'm not, you know, recently. I mean, I love the kid and all, but I was like, you know, you take my AirPod Pros again, and I might disinherit you. There you go. Do these have the little stick hanging out so you can tell that you've got headphones in your ears yes. or no? Yes, oh, they, they, do. they look a little bit like. They come in a few different colors, but I've got the white and silver ones. They look pretty close to AirPods. Okay. And so, so would you buy them? I would. I would. And you can read my full review at the website. Just search for Soundcore earbuds would be the easiest way to find it. All right. Now, wait, before we go, Mike, Mm -hmm. I told this joke to Barry. Uh Uh-huh. And I I brought it here today just because, you know, Ben being former law enforcement, I thought that you would appreciate this. Okay, you ready? A Montana senior citizen drove his brand new Corvette convertible out of the dealership, takes down the road. He pushes it to 80 miles per hour, and he's just having a great time as the wind is blowing through whatever little hair he has left. 
And then looking in his rearview mirror, he saw a Montana state trooper, blue lights flashing, siren just blaring. He floors it to 100 miles per hour. He goes 110, 120, goes up to 140 miles per hour and suddenly thinks, what am I doing? I'm like way too old for this. He pulls over and the trooper comes up to the car and he says, sir, my shift ends in 30 minutes. Today is Friday. If you can give me a good reason, a great reason, a fantastic reason for you speeding down the road so I don't have to pull you in and give me a reason that I've never heard before, I will let you go without a warning, without a ticket. The older gentleman says, three years ago, my wife ran off with a Montana state trooper, and I thought you were bringing her back. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, all right, see you and later. The tr- trooper says, have a good day, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. All right, finally, Allie, we have some high school students actually start a free tutoring service. What's that about? Yeah, well, okay, big understatement of the day. It's been a hard year, right? Especially for students. A lot of adults have struggled to work online and sit on video calls all day. Now imagine having homework and tests and all this pressure of passing your classes. A group of six high school juniors in Georgia, they wanted to give back to kids who were struggling, so they created a free virtual tutoring service. It's now serving kids across about 20 states, and free is the key word here. Tutoring is really expensive. We're talking like 50, 60 bucks an hour, and a lot of families just can't afford it. So they started this website. It's ingenify, I-N-G-E-N-F-I-Y dot org. And it was all coded by one of these kids, a 17-year-old named Jatong Su, and it matches students with student tutors. Um, He started this project in July because he wanted to make something to help people during the pandemic and had a lot of free time. He said he knew a lot of students needed volunteer hours so they can be the tutors and a lot of kids who are struggling in school. The tutors have to have a 3.7 GPA and prove that they can explain things clearly and help kids. So they go through a whole process uh, where they interview them. The site and all its young creators, they were featured on CBS This Morning. When it aired, they had 500 tutors and about 500 kids getting help. Since then, they're up to uh, past 840 kids. They also just won first prize in the University of Delaware's Horn Entrepreneurship Diamond Challenge. They won $8,000 in prize money, which is really cool. They said they're going to invest it right back into the site, uh, building up their administrative staff so that they can more easily match kids and tutors. And, of course, they said the service will always be free. That is a great idea, kind of a win-win situation, right? Absolutely. free is a very good price. Thanks for listening to the Tech Refresh podcast, heard exclusively on the Kim Commando Explained podcast from commando.com. Hey, if you'd like to comment about the podcast, good or bad, mostly good, send us an email to podcast at commando.com. Again, that's podcasts at commando.com. On behalf of Ben, Ali, Kim, I'm Mike, and we'll see you next time. And for the latest digital news and articles anytime, go to commando.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Oh,